Okay, so this tutorial is going to be dealing with, um, I guess, a branch of organic chemistry, specifically just an introduction into hydrocarbons. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we go about naming them, how we identify them, uh, both by their name and by their structure. And uh, then we'll get a little bit into branched chained hydrocarbons and how we go about naming those and drawing those. And then at the end of this video, we'll take a look at how we can use the names to draw the structure and then ultimately identify any mistakes or errors in that name and or in that structure. So if you've watched the required video on organic, you should be able to rhyme off the first 10 prefixes for identifying how many carbons there are in a parent chain or in a side group of a hydrocarbon. So let's see if you can do that now. Okay, and if you're able to do that, you should identify this. Meth, eth, prop, bu, pent, hex, hept, octanon, dec. If we take a look at this molecule, this is a molecule of propane. And yes, that's the same gas that you find in the canisters for your barbecue. But what we have to identify here when we're naming this is propane. Prop indicating that we have three carbons along that backbone, and the ane indicating that there's only single bonds between adjacent carbons. Now, this is just a three-dimensional structure of propane, but we do not have the benefit of having three dimensions all the time, so sometimes we have to write it out. So, with every other type of molecule in chemistry, there is certainly a chemical formula. Here is the chemical formula for propane. And when we write it out, there are several different ways in organic chemistry that we can draw or write out these names. So, this is what we call a structural diagram of propane or an expanded structural diagram of propane. Sometimes, just as a bit of a shortcut, I will draw it like this, and that just indicates that uh, all of the ends of these lines around the carbon, it's assumed that they all have hydrogens on them. I just do that in terms of saving time and illustrating especially uh, larger compounds. We can have something which is a condensed structural diagram. So it will take the carbons and hydrogens and accommodate each one of those. You will notice that when we talk about the condensed structural diagram versus the expanded structural diagram is that the number of lines that we have here corresponds to the number of hydrogens that we are going to see here. And then if we take a look at the final structure here, probably the simplest one, this is a line structural diagram. That's right, if you understand it correctly, you will understand that this represents a molecule of propane. So it's understood that for each point and corner, each of these carbons has a full complement of hydrogen available to it. Now for carbons at the end, that indicates that it's going to have three hydrogens available to it, and carbons in the middle indicate an additional two. So you can see how this structure would help us with uh, identifying the number of carbons and hydrogens that are in the chemical formula for propane. Now let's start talking about branching. So if we go back to our propane, we are going to adjust this molecule just a little bit, and I am going to put a branch off of that central uh, carbon. So we can see here, if we take a look at it, there's no one way that we can trace without leaving the paper, so to speak, or without leaving the molecule. That is, this is no longer a straight chain hydrocarbon. It has a branch. And it doesn't matter whether you interpret it this way, or this way, or this way, and treat this as the branch, this is the branch, this is the branch. This is one of these molecules that we have to sort of pick where we're going to identify the start from. And so if we take a look at this, we will see that the longest continuous chain, regardless of where we start, is always going to be three carbons. So as a result, this parent chain is going to be a propane. Prop, again, because it indicates those three carbons, and the ane indicating that there are only single bonds that we see here along that parent chain. We do have a group, so if I identify this as the parent chain, then this is the branch coming off of it. This branch, or these branches, are what we refer to as alkyl groups. And these alkyl groups, as we can see, have a certain number of carbons in them. This one has one carbon. So rather than calling this methane, which we would not do because it is not part of the backbone or the parent chain, we call this methyl. So this would be a methyl group. And often, because the methyl group could appear in more than one place, we have to identify its location. Now, because it's not on one of the terminal ones, it is in the center one, regardless of where we start counting this from, here or here, it's going to have the same location number. That is, it's always going to be on the second carbon, regardless of where we start. 
So we would call this 2-methylpropane. Now, there are multiple locations that this could appear. It could appear in the end here, it could appear in the end here, but if it does, it actually changes the structure of it. Now, if we take a look at this particular aspect of it, you can see that I've moved the methyl group from the second carbon in this original propane, and I put it on the first or the third, depending on how you want to look at it. But notice now, if I do that, it changes the structure of this so that the longest continuous chain has now four carbons. So this is no longer a propane. We wouldn't call this one methyl propane. It is now a butane because there are four carbons continuously along that parent chain. So this is no longer a branch chain, it is a straight chain. So rarely, if ever, will you see an alkyl group branching off of the first carbon because it will just extend the longest continuous chain. So moving back to our methylpropane, I don't have to name it as 2-methylpropane because there are no other locations that this side group or this alkyl group can be found, so this is simply methylpropane. It does have other names, it is referred to as isobutane, but for our purposes I would expect that you would name it by identifying the side chain, the alkyl group, in this case the methyl group, identifying the number of the carbon that it is found on, and then naming it as such. Now those structures, even though they were branched, were relatively straightforward. So let's go to an example that I think is really going to test you here. Let's take a look at the structure of this compound. So if you take a look at this name, what I'm asking you to do is draw that structure out. And my suggestion is the first thing that you do is you identify the parent chain. So we can see here that we have a heptane. Now heptane is one that students often mix up the most. It is not septane, it is heptane, and it does indicate that we have seven carbons in the parent chain. So my first instruction to my students is, if you identify the parent chain, draw that first. So if I have identified the parent chain here by drawing out seven carbons continuously, and I suppose if you wanted to, you could identify any structure or you could draw it any way that you like, but I'm going to do, for now anyway, I'm going to do an expanded structural diagram. So the next part is to decide which end you're going to start numbering from. I typically number left to right, so this will be the first carbon here, and this will be the seventh carbon here. We could number them all if we wish, but typically I number the first and last, just to remind myself of how many carbons I actually have. And then we could go through and start numbering the carbons on which we find these branches. So in this case, we see a branch off of the 1, we see a branch off of the 2, the 4, and the 5. So I'm going to see a branch here off of 2, I'm going to see a branch off of 4, and I'm going to see a branch off of 5. And in this way, in going through this structure, I know that by numbering only the ones that are involved in the name, that those are the ones that when I complete the structure should have something attached or associated with them. Whether those are side chains, or later on functional groups, or multiple bonds, or just help me identify where it starts and where it ends, I find these numbers do help out when you first start drawing these structures. So on the first carbon, we see that there is a methyl group. So I'm going to draw the methyl group right here and have identified that since it is a methyl group it only has one carbon and there's the full complement of hydrogens I'm going to draw around it. So the propyl group indicates that there are going to be three carbons associated with it. Remember the terminal carbons get three hydrogens associated with them. Each of the ones that are internal get two. So now I have my propyl group off of my second carbon. If we take a look at 4, 5, notice there's diethyl. Diethyl does not mean that there are two ethyl groups strung together. That would be a butyl group. What diethyl means is that there are two ethyl groups in the entire molecule. So while it may seem a bit redundant that we have two location numbers, and that would seem to imply that there are two ethyl groups, we do have the location numbers and the use of that prefix, in this case the di, to indicate that there are two ethyl groups and it provides location for us. So the first ethyl group is found on the fourth carbon, and the second ethyl group is found on the fifth carbon. And if we take a look now, you'll see that we have all of the appropriate groups in the appropriate locations. We have drawn the structure appropriately. Thanks for watching, and oh, you don't think this is right. Hmm. Interesting. Why would that be? Well, I actually can't hear you, so hopefully you're not talking to your monitor. 
Well, what you might have identified is that here, the longest continuous chain isn't actually a heptane. You might have identified that if we take a look, the longest continuous chain is in fact a little bit longer than a heptane. You might have also suggested that we shouldn't have a side group or an alkyl group off of the first carbon, and you would be of course correct. But you may also notice that that actually isn't our first carbon anymore. So what I want you to do is press pause and see if you can name this structure appropriately. Do you think you did it? Okay, well let's take a look. So if we're identifying this particular structure, we notice now that the longest continuous chain exists here. And as a result of this being the longest continuous chain, notice how many carbons we have now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our longest chain now becomes nine carbons. You also could have said to yourself, well, what if this is my chain here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Both this and this are acceptable in identifying the longest chain. And you'll notice that the branch off of this carbon is going to be the same regardless of whether you pick this one or this one as your parent chain. So notice now that we've identified three branches off of the parent chain, and that all branches contain two carbons. That is, they are all ethyl groups. Notice that if we start counting from here, we would get location numbers of 4, 6, and 7. But if we started counting from this end, or this end, regardless of which one you choose, we're going to get numbers of 3, 4, and 6. And 3, 4, and 6 are the lowest combination of location numbers, so that's the end that we are going to start counting from. So in doing so, if you've put this all together correctly, you should correctly identify this molecule as a 3, 4, 6 triethyl nonane. So one final thing, take a look at the name that you've written down for this particular structure. Have you separated the numbers and the letters by a dash? Have you separated the different numbers by commas? And have you included the prefix for having multiple side groups? And if you've done all that and you got the structure correctly, you can give yourself a pat on the back. So those of you that were taking a look at that final structure, you might have noticed, if you were astute enough, that it actually isn't finished. You see, what I have missed is completing all of the hydrogens, or at least in this case, indicating all of the hydrogens that are not there on that parent chain. So you may recognize from that original parent chain that these carbons aren't actually complete. So we do, and my expectation is that you are going to show every single hydrogen that is bound to those carbon. And the trick with this is just remembering that every single carbon has to have four bonds associated with it. So if it's a terminal carbon, you've got to fill it up with three more. You'll notice that it has the single bond to the other carbon. And then the rest of the carbon, we're just going to make sure that there are four lines extending off of each. Hopefully this video helped you solidify some of the concepts from the first couple organic videos and that you're able to confidently now not only identify structures from names, but be able to self-evaluate and figure out whether or not the names provided for those structures are correct and whether or not you have put together the appropriate format for naming hydrocarbons and more specifically branch-chained hydrocarbons. Thanks for watching.